Hey, hey, welcome back everyone. Old Bubs here, and today I want to go over my top five most carried knives in the year of 2022. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because my most carried knives, I think, provide really good insight into knives that are available and are super functional, uh, as well as cool. So they're the things that I like to carry tend to be things that are ultra functional and have just a little bit of pizzazz and uh, I like stuff that you can make your own but with the exception of one of these they are all super available so you can pick one up and add it to your rotation or if you're someone that is looking for just the one EDC I would say that all of these are fantastic options to consider and take a look at without further ado number five on this list is the Protec Knives Malibu. So this is sporting a reverse Tonto M390 blade, button lock mechanism, this is anodized aluminum. This is a made in the USA knife. And this is fantastic. Now, I do have to qualify that this is the one on the list that's harder to get they usually sell out same day as a drop. Now, new drops are coming all the time, and I'm sure Protec wants to sell more and more of these knives, but even at the fairly steep price point, these things sell out quickly. Also, far and above, there's kind of a top three. The top three of this list got carried so much more than the four and the five, and there was probably a lot of things right in the same territory as the Protec Malibu, but it was number five on this list, and it is an exceptional knife in its own right. This is certainly one to consider adding to your collection because it is button lock perfection, and it is just a joy to carry and cut with. And the build quality is obviously superior with Pro Tip. Let's set that little guy aside here. Number four on this list is the Nafs Lander. This is a Ben Peterson design. And as you see, I slapped on some Timberline scales, courtesy of Nafs. This is a D2 blade, a little liner lock. The OEM on this guy is QSP. Now when this guy hit the market, uh, it stayed in my pocket for like two weeks straight, which I am a person who likes to rotate my, my knives just like my undies. I change it out every day except for when I'm camping and then I'm stuck with the one for a whole week. Moving on. Um, this has been just a joy to carry. It's a smaller knife. And it just fits in the hand well, fits in the pocket, really smooth. And I just love a lot of things about it. Um, there are plenty of videos to look at. I have a video of when I swapped these scales and just showcasing how quick that can happen because it's only four screws per side and you don't have to take apart the frame and you just swap them out and the scales are open source. So people are making tons of them and you can get the CAD files yourself to 3D print whatever you want. The Naf Slander, coming in at number four. Number three, probably no surprise here, not a shocking knife, a Demco Knives 8020.5. I really, really like this design. Now, there are some new things in the Demco world on the horizon that I think are going to make USA models of these a little bit easier to come by and might challenge this beautiful gem of a Taiwanese knife. And blade steels are continuing to approve. This is an OS 10 a but the user experience of this knife and the shark lock is just so wonderful. In this one, you can see that I put on flytanium wavelength scales in this neon green G10. It really spruces it up. And then I have a pocket clip from Lynch Northwest that makes it ultra deep carry because the Demco version is not a very deep carry pocket clip and I like deep carry. And then I threw on just for good measure a brass backspacer. I have a video of this scale swap if you're looking for a tutorial. So much can be said about the Demco Knives 8020.5. It is just a, a fantastic carry experience. There's so many different means of deployment. The Shark Lock fin is strong. 
like strong baby strong and it's so effortless and fidgety to deploy and undeploy whatever considered what word that should be one-handed opening and closing is just a dream it's buttery smooth and the blade comes in this shark foot which is obviously a sheep's foot sort of style it also comes in a clip point i have one of each so far and another one on the way many more surprises to come so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out the demco knives 80 20.5 coming in at number three and then number two here we have the spider co para three or paramilitary three this guy is was just the standard black G10 version and S45 VN steel. Let's see if we can get that to point a dangerous game. Anywho, this guy is just a fantastic knife. Um, if you if you don't know, if you've looked around and seen Spider Co's and you've kind of turned uh, your nose up at this here alien bump or the big hole, or you just don't really know what's up with spider coves, or perhaps you tried a, a Tenacious or something like that, which is a fine knife, but in the 8CR, and you found it to be a less than stellar experience, or maybe you tried a Delica. A Delica was my gateway drug to EDC knives, um, and the VG10 wasn't everything it cracked up to be. Well, let me tell you, when you step into these Golden Colorado made knives in the, the PM2 or the Para 3, there is a whole different level of experience that comes with them. And the very best thing about Spyderco knives, I believe, is the way they cut. They slice through their edge geometry, they slice through everything so well. Even when it has dulled slightly, which this one is not dull at all, this one could cut my finger open real easy even when they've dulled a little bit their edge geometry is just so good that they slice super well spider co also um, does many cool sprint runs i i have a manix 2 that is in rex 45 and this burnt orange g10 that i absolutely love and i love carrying that um, but this pair of three with another lynch northwest pocket clip I think a Lynch Northwest pocket clip is, an, is a necessary upgrade to basically all Spideys. Also have these titanium, titanium scales. And this has been something that has occupied my pocket often. And I find when I am going to do household chores that require a lot of cutting, if I'm doing a project in my yard, if I'm building something, taking something apart, working on a car, anything like that, this knife is most often the one that ends up in my pocket because it just cuts and it doesn't quit and with gloves on gloves off this spidey hole and this compression lock is very easy to manipulate and it is just a fantastic experience spider co para three coming in at number two and number one is my black and purple benchmade bug out now this knife is um, one of my oldest knives that I have. And these scales are titanium from Rock Scale Design. I put purple screws in there, this purple backspacer, purple thumb studs, and then this faux Timascus titanium clip with purple. And this knife, um, does it for me as far as the looks are concerned. You can see on the blade that it has been used plenty and often. This one I would say for probably the first couple three months of this year was what I carried all the time which is why it's still number one. I love this knife. It is really great. It uh, fits me well. It, it gives it gives me a little bit of joy every time I carry it. It, the bug out is slim when you upgrade them like this they're super sturdy they cut well the blade is great 
I've sharpened this one many times and it uh, continues to perform like a champ. I actually am a pretty big fan of S30V even though it seems to be going out of style for some. And this bug out has been just an excellent pocket companion. I don't know that this bug out is going to be on this list for 2023, but time will tell. I know that this is a rock solid knife and it's a contender for uh, a game that I like to play with myself called if I had to go down to one pocket knife, which one would I keep? And this Benchmade bug out is certainly a contender for that list. Um, I have an upcoming video planned where we're going to do a bracket challenge and I'm going to uh, figure out what it is that I actually think is that one knife that I would keep. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that video. It will be coming up and it will be tons of fun. But let's go through those again. Just for shoots and toots. We have the Protec Malibu in number five. In number four. We have the beautiful NAFS Company Lander, Ben Peterson Design. Number three, we have the Demco Knives AD 20.5. The Spyderco Para 3 S45VN Titanium Scale coming in at number two. And then at number one, we have the Old Bub Special Black and Purple Benchmade bug out. It means the world to me that you're watching, that you're commenting, that you're interacting, that you're suggesting things. Um, it, it's very exciting. We have tons of things planned for the Old Bubs channel and the Old Bubs premium sharpening service. So make sure to stay tuned and above all else, let love and light fill your life. I will see you next time.